Let's just take a quick look at some of the types of sources you might be using and how to construct the works cited for those sources. Um, if you choose to use a film version of Hamlet as a secondary source to show a certain interpretation of a character or the way a theme is conveyed through props or setting or characters, um, you will format your work cited this way. You have the title of the film. If it's called something other than Hamlet, you will put that film title in italics, followed by a period, put the director, and a good selection of the performers, um, and the publishing company or production company, and the year it was made. Notice how the punctuation goes. Make sure you have a hanging indent. You'll notice all the sources are in alphabetical order. Um, one thing I've noticed when students are trying to create a hanging indent is sometimes in the alignment, they will use this justify, where, which makes everything on both sides a little crazy. Let's see if I can do that. Well, I'll show you how it looks on this one. It spreads everything out in a weird way, so don't use that. Go back to left align so it's not spread out in a weird way. Um, another source you need to use is the textbook version of Hamlet. Um, if you have another version, uh, next semester we're not going to have Hamlet in the textbook, so we'll use a different version. But this is the version for spring of 2022. Um, you can just put exactly what you see here. You'll notice that the page numbers encompass the entire play. You're not just including the page numbers that you have quoted. Another type of source you will use is a print source. Um, this is a print source I got through AVL, so I have EBSCOhost included there. Um, so we have the last name, comma, first name of the author. If there is no author, you probably don't have a credible secondary source. Um, so those summaries and study guides and things like that will not list a single author because many people contribute to those sources. So do not use those. Find an actual scholar who has made a claim or an assertion, given an interpretation, made an argument about something having to do with the play Hamlet. Um, don't just use overviews and study guides um, as college level secondary sources. Those are there to help you understand the play, but they are not there to be in an academic conversation with you, which is your goal for writing a research, research essay. You are having an exchange of ideas with previous scholars because you are a scholar yourself. So you'll have last name, comma, first name of the scholar author of the source, followed by a period. Article titles go in quotation marks. Then the publishing place of that article, it's usually going to be an academic journal. The title of that journal will be in italics. You may have the volume and number and the original publication here, and then the page numbers on which you would find that article in that source. And then this is the database. So put the database title in italics. And the DOI is like a URL, um, but it's more concise. So if you are using AVL, you will have all this information. Um, generally, if you click the icon that says Cite on AVL, it will give you the MLA format of the work cited. So you can copy and paste that. Make sure when you're copying and pasting that you change any font that needs to be updated to italics. If you see anything that's in lowercase, make sure you capitalize all the major words of the title. I think in my original source, only the first letter here of the title was capitalized, so I went back and capitalized all the major words. If you see anything in all caps, that is a word like literary and clinical, that's an actual word. If it's in all caps, fix it so that just the first letters are capitalized. EBSCO is an abbreviation for 
an organization. So all, those all caps get to stay like that. If you cite the dictionary, you are welcome to do that. That shouldn't really count as another secondary source um, as the film would or a print source um, from AVL or one you find in the library. It's better to find one in the library. But um, you can use AVL if you wish. Using a dictionary to closely examine the definition of a word is also a good way to add more content and to really uh, dig deeply into what you're citing from the primary source. Um, and if you do that, you can cite that definition um, this way. You just give the word that you have looked up in quotation marks as if it were an article title, give the name of the dictionary you used in italics, give the publisher of the dictionary the year it was published. If it's an online source, just scroll to the bottom of that web page and look for the most recent year or most recent date and include that there. And then if it's online, you will give the URL as well. All right, that pretty much covers what you'll need for Works Cited. If you get a text from the library, follow this general format. Uh, author's last name, comma, first name, title of the chapter, if you have a chapter from a book or a journal, uh, put that here. The name of the journal that the chapter was in or the article was in will be in italics after that. You can do the volume number and, and uh, all of that good stuff that you will find in probably the front pages of that journal. Or book, if it's a book and you're using the whole book as your citation, then you will not have the article title. Um, you'll just put the book title in italics. The publishing of the book, the publishing company will replace the database here. And um, if it's the entire book, you won't need the page numbers. If it's a chapter in a book, you will need the page numbers. And remember, use the page numbers of the whole source, not just the page numbers you're quoting in your work cited. Um, one of the librarians would be happy to help you format your work cited, I'm sure. Um, you can look up mlastyle.org. Um, to see if you can find, let's find mla.org, you can find um, the work cited, a quick guide, and they actually give you a template where you can see exactly um, how to put everything in there. So you just literally can look up the samples, you can see author, you can see the title of the source, you can see the container, which is the um, either the book or the journal you found it in. If you don't have something like a contributor or a version, you just leave that off and go to the next thing. So that hopefully will help you out a little bit. All right, that's it for the work cited. Good luck with it. I know you're gonna do great. Let me know if you have questions. Also, the librarians are great resources and the tutors as well. They can help you out um, with the work cited if you should need some help.